What's up guys? Welcome back to Bible Home with the Nuns. Today we're in Ezekiel chapters 20, 20, 21, and 22. Let's get started. All right. They made us busy today. Yeah. So in chapter 20, it's kind of where I camped out mostly. It was the happiest. <laughs> and um, 21 and 22 were just heavy. A lot of Ezekiel is heavy because we don't like what Israel is choosing in the life that they're living right now. But... Um, We'll talk more about that in a second. So in chapter 20, the elders of Israel all of a sudden want to ask God a question. And God's like, oh, now you remember me. And I'm sure God's more loving and um, less sarcastic than I like to think of this. But they haven't really been too concerned about God lately. So God wants to use this moment that he has their attention and he wants to talk to them. Um, maybe this will draw them back. Then God gives a recap of his relationship with his people. He reminds them about their slavery in Egypt and how he rescued them. In verses 7 and 8 in chapter 20, he says, I said to them, cast away the detestable things your eyes feast on. Do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and they were not willing to listen to me. None of them cast away the detestable things their eyes feasted on, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Saying, like, he gave them these rules and that's the very thing that they did. They disobeyed the rules. Um, and then God goes throughout this chapter telling about his relationship with them. They do this over and over again. God tells them how he brought them into the wilderness in verses 10 through 13 in chapter 20, he said, I led them out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. I gave them my statutes. He gave them his rules and made them known um, by which if a person does them, he shall live. Moreover, I gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between me and them that they might know that I'm the Lord who sanctifies them, who sets them apart. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my statutes but rejected my rules, by which if a person does them, he shall live. And my Sabbath, they greatly profaned. They did not observe them. They um, ignored them completely is basically what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And God continues to go through their whole relationship, reminding them how he has provided for them, how he has proved himself to them over and over, how he has walked with them. But they always rebel. They always turn away from him, from Egypt to the wilderness, to the promised land, to exile in Babylon. Tara Lee Cobble in the Bible recap says, no matter their circumstances, enslaved, oppressed, challenged, or blessed, they still reject God. Their hearts go after idols. And so God speaks truth to each generation. This is why God seems so repetitive. They repeat the same mistakes. And each generation still does the same thing. But then... True to God's character and his goodness, at the end of chapter 20, starting in verse 40, he reminds them that when they're ready to come back to him, he will be waiting with love and with open arms. Those verses say, For on my holy mountain, the mountain height of Israel, declares the Lord God, there all the house of Israel, all of them, shall serve me in the land. There I will accept them, and there I will require your contributions and the choicest of your gifts with all your sacred offerings. As a pleasing aroma, I will accept you. When I bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you've been scattered, he's going to go get them. He's going to save them again, rescue them again. I will manifest my holiness among you in the sight of the nations. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I bring you into the land of Israel, the country that I swore to give to your fathers. And there you shall remember your ways and all your deeds, deeds with which you have defiled yourselves, and you shall loathe yourselves for all the evil that you've committed. It'll wake them up. They'll finally realize what they have been doing wrong. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I deal with you for my name's sake, not according to your evil ways, nor according to your corrupt deeds, O house of Israel, declares the Lord. And then chapter 21 and 22 just basically... They're about more of God's wrath on those who choose sin and idols. Um, the Lord draws his sword. He's ready for judgment on these people. And then God has Ezekiel do more of that weird uh, acting out and <laughs> and showing basically by, by his acting um, what God's going to do to the people. So this covered a bunch of ground. I'm just really camping out in chapter 20. Um, Jax, what was your takeaway from today? 
Okay, so I originally had two takeaways, but while mom was recapping chapter 20, um, I, I came up with another takeaway. Oh, grand. Okay, so my first takeaway is I like how this is told from God's perspective, so we can see what he's dealing with, why he chooses his decisions, and uh, we get a little bit more background on him. And then... Sorry. Um, so, I think sometimes, since we've heard this so much, we may overlook the part, but at the beginning... Of almost every chapter, Ezekiel says, and then the Lord spoke to me. But I think that's really cool how God takes the time to speak to Ezekiel as an individual, one-on-one, -on -one, have a conversation. Agree. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then my third takeaway is how God is steadfast and he pursues us and he continues to come to us even though we mess up. Agree. Uh, I have a takeaway. Okay, cool. But I heard one, not three. Okay. Um, My I takeaway... <laughs> My takeaway is in chapter 20 how um, uh, God tells them like a lot and reminds them a lot because they haven't been talking to him. That's just, I just thought of that and um, uh, it just made it pop up in my brain that, um, okay, so if you don't do something uh if you don't do something uh every day well then some some one day you're gonna not you're gonna have to do it like oh no i have to do all you have to make a procrastinate day. yeah so you're saying since they hadn't been talking to him now that they're all of a sudden giving god his, their attention he's got a lot to say to him right mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm when they could have been talking to him all along. So my takeaway today is turning into being maybe a theme for all of Ezekiel, but God is still chasing after us. God is still chasing after them. Not one of us would have the patience and the level of forgiveness with each other that God has shown all throughout these generations of all these Israelites. Something stuck out to me though when I read through chapter 20 when God was reminding them of his history with his people. Verse 12 says, I gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. A big problem that I see in the lives of the Israelites is how forgetful they are. As he goes through, I was with you in Egypt. I was with you in Israel. I was with you in the promised land. I was with you in Babylon. Um, he points out the sin that they turn to. They're breaking all the commandments. But he's saying basically they forgot God. They turned away from him. And another sin that he holds up there with that is they did not observe his Sabbaths. Um, they have seen literally miraculous things before their very eyes. They have seen waters parted. They have seen a pillar of fire and a cloud that they would follow. They have seen miracle after miracle, provision of manna. I mean, we could sit here and talk about that all day. And here they go, as soon as they move to a new land, oh, oh, that's a cool God, let me follow that. Let me worship this idol just because you do and you're my neighbor. It's as if they don't remember at all. And so through God's account of where the Israelites went wrong, I see some main problems being their forgetfulness and them not observing the Sabbath. I think these two can go hand in hand. From the beginning of creation, God himself modeled Sabbath. A day of rest, a day of slowing down, not because God needed to rest. The Bible tells us that he does not sleep nor slumber. He doesn't need to rest. But because our creator who created us knew that we would need that. When we fail to slow down every now and then, we get too busy and we fail to stop and think about God. If we keep going and going and fill our schedules every single day, then we are not making time to remember God and to think about, am I even doing the things with my day that God would want me to do? So for my takeaway today, it's about how important it is for us to slow down each, each week. Even if you're like me, taking a moment every single day to stop and think about God, to remember and to acknowledge and to be thankful and to praise God for what he's done in my life. I do not want to find myself where the Israelites are during Ezekiel's time. And these are some steps where God told them that they failed. So I can apply those things to my life to make sure I don't follow and chase after idols the way they did. 
So for today's challenge, does your family observe a Sabbath day? A day to rest, a day to think about God and what he has done and what he's doing in your lives. If not, make a plan with your family to pick a day each week to do just that, what God modeled out for us. Mm -hmm. And then even now, take a moment right now to think about and to talk about what God has done and is doing in your life right now. And then take another minute to tell God thank you. All right, friends, we're going to see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.